The first reading this morning is taken from Genesis 11. Now the whole world had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had, a, and they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one purpose to do. And they all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language. So that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth. And they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord disp dispersed them over the face of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will pour my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. With the heart one believes and is justified. And with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The epistle reading today is taken from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where, there, where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at the sound, the multitude came together, and they were be bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, proselytes Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able and willing, I invite you to please rise for the all in the verse. <laughs> Oh. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me these things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to you your bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you with, my peace I give to you. Not as the world that gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, if you love me, you will have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise and let us go from here. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's gospel reading on this Pentecost Sunday hits home for us as Jesus' chosen children. It's called his farewell discourse because Jesus is preparing the disciples for the time that he will leave them and ascend to the Father to fulfill the scriptures and create a new kingdom in heaven, one for us, his children, his chosen children. For us, this is a beautiful thing. For it gives us the peace Jesus is talking about. See, in the gospel reading, we understand this peace that he's talking about because we are his adopted children. We have the peace and comfort of living in this fallen world where the devil runs rapid and has taught the world to embrace sin on an epic level. But not just to embrace sin, but to reject the word of God like we heard in the gospel reading today. But we still have this peace because we know that no matter what the devil and the world does to us, it doesn't change the fact that we have inherited the kingdom of heaven. It's because of our faith in Christ. This is something the world doesn't understand. Because the world hates us. They hate us because we belong to Christ. The world wants to destroy us and turn us away from Christ. But they can't because we also have the spirit of truth that Jesus was talking about in the gospel lesson today. It is the Holy Spirit. It guides us. It strengthens us. And it nourishes our faith. We receive this spirit of truth at our baptisms and from hearing the word of God. See, the spirit of truth is a gift from God. It's something you can't earn from righteous works and good deeds. And the devil knows this. And that's why he tries to stop us from hearing the word of God, because the devil knows the Bible very well. He understands what Jesus was saying when he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and my father will love him. See, that's a really important thing to process and think about. Because the devil knows, just like we know, that every one of us in this room are sinful people. He knows that we will sin every day in thought, word, and deed. And that we will sin every day for the rest of our lives. And when we do die, it will be because of our sins. The devil also knows, like we do, that because of our faith in Jesus that we receive from the spirit of truth that we will come to church and that we will repent of our sins. And when we come to church and repent of our sins, we are forgiven of them. 
And this is why the devil tries to stop us from hearing the word of God. He tries to stop us from coming to church. He tries to stop us from repenting of our sins. See, you need to understand that the devil is not the person that Hollywood is painted. The devil is not this evil person running around with horns and casting and doing amazing, crazy things and levitating people. No. The devil is the master of lies. He will be your best friend. He will convince you of things that you would never have thought to be convinced of before. See, the devil likes to pervert the word of God just enough. He likes to twist it around. He likes to manipulate it just enough that we think we're still hearing the word of God, but we're not. That is what the devil does, and that is how the devil gets us. See, the devil doesn't go in and try to destroy us in ways of what I said before. He does things like convincing us that certain sins are no longer sins. By seeing, saying things like the Bible was written by a bunch of bigoted racist men who wanted to oppress people. Who wanted us to follow their ideas and not God's. The God I know and love would never make that a sin or expect us to follow those stupid commandments. The problem is, is once we fall into this trap, we start to pick and choose what commandments to follow. And eventually, we believe that God is all about love. Faith has nothing to do with it. God wants us all to do whatever makes us feel good because he would never send us to hell if we we're good people, right? Because we do good deeds. We do our charity. We do all these wonderful things, right? The reality is he does. But if we start rejecting certain sins, we begin to reject the word of God. And when we reject the word of God, we're no longer a part of his flock. And we now belong to the world. And the devil just won. If we look around and we see the world, especially in our country, we realize that they are rejecting the word of God on an epic level. All we have to do is look around our own city and see events that are happening this month. You will see sin being embraced on an epic level. And the sad part is anyone who rejects their ideology will be called a bigot and a racist. Racist. They do these things to browbeat us. They do it so that we will go into submission. We will agree with them out of fear of losing our jobs or our friendships. But when we do these things, we eventually lose our faith in Jesus because we adopt these ideologies. It's kind of scary how fast you can go down that rabbit hole. And you can think that you're still doing what is right and worshiping him. The good news for us is, is all of us have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have the spirit of truth. And that's why we're in this church today. Because we understand that we are sinners. We understand that we are completely lost without Christ. And we understand that we need to be forgiven of our sins. We understand that we need to be nourished in our faith. And we understand that the Holy, Holy Spirit guides us. But we also know, that even though the Holy Spirit guides us, that we we're going to stumble from time to time because we know that we are sinners. But that's why we're here today to repent of those sins and once again be nourished from hearing the word of God. But also, we come here today to kneel at his altar, to drink his precious blood and eat his precious body by partaking in the Lord's Supper. See, when we do that, the spirit of truth gives us faith and nourishes us. Gives us the strength to go out in this world and fight off our daily attacks from sin, death, and the devil. And that's really important for us to understand. 
Because as God's children, everything we do in life all points to one thing, points to the cross. Because we know it's our salvation. We know that Jesus loves us so much that he sealed our salvation when he was nailed to that cross. We know that Jesus loves us so much that when he was nailed to that cross, he paid for our sins. And we understand that that's the only way we can have salvation was by his sacrifice on that cross. That is the love Christ has for us. It's something, to be honest, we'll never come close to understanding the love that God has for his creation. But because we have the spirit of truth, we understand that there is salvation. And the spirit of, and the spirit of truth guides us in this fallen world. See, the same spirit of truth is the one that the apostles received on Pentecost. It's the same spirit of truth that guided them in the fallen world that they also were rejected in. In the same way that we are. The same fallen world that they proclaim the love of Christ to everyone they know who rejected them and hated them. Sometimes that's hard for us to hear that. But it's the truth. Because Christ wants us to proclaim the love of Christ to everyone we know. Even the ones who hate us. And even the ones who reject us. Because we are his children. And Christ wants us to love them. No matter if they try to persecute us. No matter if we don't agree with them. Or their ideologies. Because it's not about us. It's about Christ and his salvation. It's about the love that Christ has for us. And it's about the love that we're supposed to proclaim to them, just like the apostles did. Because in the end, God desires all people to say, be saved. And it falls on us, his chosen people, his adopted children, to share this with this fallen world we live in. That's why Christ tells us we are to love them. We are to be compassionate towards them. We are to let them know that they are loved by a creator and he desires them to come to church. He desires them to receive the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, so that they also can be saved by sin, death, and the devil, just like we are. Because in the end, it all points to the cross. And that is our mission on earth. I know that sounds scary. I know that sounds hard. But if we really ask ourselves these really hard questions, and let's don't sugarcoat it. Jesus was very clear on the last day. You either belong to him or you belong to the world. There is no in between. Just like he said in the gospel reading, if you don't have faith in Christ, you will not have your name called on the last day. If you don't have your name called on the last day, you will not ascend to heaven. See, faith is something you can't earn. It is a gift from God. So in the end, it doesn't matter how good or nice a person you are, how many good deeds you've done. It won't matter how much money you have or how popular you are. It won't matter how much you've donated to charity or spent time sharing with people. If you don't have the Holy Spirit then you don't have the faith in Christ and you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That's the hard reality. So the question is, do we share the love of Christ with our friends and family, our loved ones? Or are we worried about offending them? Are we worried about hurting their feelings so they don't invite us over for Christmas dinner? Or are we more worried about eternity? Because that is what is at stake. So when you ponder this, share this message with the world. Share this message with your friends and family, especially ones who don't believe in Christ. 
Let them know that Christ died for them also on that cross. Let them know that Christ paid for their sins also. Let them know that Jesus loves them and he wants them to be saved just like we are. Let the spirit of truth guide you, just like it did the apostles, to share the love of Christ with everyone you meet and hope that they too will be saved in hopes that they too will have the same peace that we have, the peace that Jesus talked about in today's gospel reading. That peace that we have that passes all human understanding, the peace that gets us through our darkest times, the peace that helps us understand that because we belong to Jesus, nothing the devil or the world can do or say will turn us away from Jesus. Give them that peace. Give them that love that we have from Jesus. Give them the peace in knowing on the last day because of Jesus, they will live forever in the kingdom of heaven. Because we all know this, but when you give them that kind of peace, all of a sudden, nothing the world has to offer will ever compare to the peace that Jesus gives us the love that Jesus has us. Give that to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, that same peace, guard your hearts and minds until Christ does return again in glory. Amen.